Well, hello, come in, come in. Welcome to another edition of the Playwrights Roundtable. My name is Sir Theodore Ebert, and this is my canine companion, Oliver. <laughs> Playwrights Roundtable is Central Florida's only year-round producer of original stage works. Writers are nurtured and critiqued in a free monthly workshop. Eventually, many scripts are developed into one-act shorts and showcased as a PRT production. And then sometimes, I get special permission to show them to you. Like this play here. It's 1962, and an unwed teenage mother and her mom disagree about the right thing to do regarding the infant she has just given birth to. The play is called The Right Thing, and is written by Elise Eady, and is directed by Kristen Dewey. Ah, the 60s. What an interesting time that was. I remember I was doing a sound check for Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock. Mm. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. If that diamond ring don't shine, Mama's gonna, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Mama'll get a job at the five and dime. If that five and dime is dumb, Mama's gonna hold your tiny thumb. <laughs> <coughs> Mama, look at her. All that work I didn't, she still looks just like Timbo. She has blue eyes, though. The nurse says that all babies are born with blue eyes. You just gotta wait and see what color takes. They might be brown, or they might even be green. No, yeah, and she might lose all that hair, too. Sometimes babies are born with a whole head of hair and then they grow in something new. You hear that? Something new. <laughs> well, they feeding you all right? Yes, ma'am. Did you do well in your studies and all? Yes, ma'am. You want to hold her, Mama? Mm -mm. She hardly was anything. You shouldn't get used to it, Callie. I know. She feels nice, though. Well, High school graduation happened last week. Clara Sims got to make the valedictory speech. <laughs> I know this is unkind to me, but she spit any time she said anything. Oh, honestly, you think her mother would want to do something about those front teeth? We used to call her the nozzle on account she spit showered the whole world every time she opened her mouth. That is unkind. <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> it is. Oh, I just kept thinking about how Pretty and neat y'all look, would have looked in your, in your cap and gown. Well, I did not look pretty and neat at all, I'll tell you what. I meant if you'd been back home and not here. I know. We did have a graduation here, though, back in May. Did you get my letter? We had caps and gowns, and six of us walked across the living room floor. <laughs> we looked like a parade of elephants. <laughs> and no one got spit showered. Someone's water broke, though. <gasps> Not mine. I did almost faint, though. It was real hot that day. Oh, it was hot back home, too. Last week, I had to put a block of ice in front of the fan and bed down on the floor. <laughs> I couldn't have laid on the floor with her rolling around inside me. So I just sat by the window, thought about how I missed prom and all. Mama, mm. did you hear the Russians sent another Sputnik into space last week? Mm -hmm. I was so hoping to see it. I sat by the window all last week before she was born, trying so hard. That Sputnik's supposed to have a pretend man inside, like a big doll looking out the window. <laughs> Mama, hmm. do you think she'll make it up into space someday? Well, you better hope she doesn't, Callie June, if it's a Russian ship. <laughs> <laughs> You're sure you don't want to hold her, Mama? No, I, I, I shouldn't. I know, but she's your grandbaby. Little eyelashes, little elbows, and all alive. She came out of me all alive, Mama, screaming and carrying on. Well, you must have dreamt that, Kelly. I don't think so. Well, I hope they had you asleep for heaven's sakes. You can't be awake to have a baby. But I remember it, though, her coming out. Just like I remember having her inside me. Did I ever get the hiccups when I was inside you, Mama? 
Yes, you did. You like to make me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you seen Timbo at graduation, did you? Mm, I saw him. Did he say anything to you? Mm -mm. I guess he's busy. He didn't look it. Addie wrote and said something about him enlisting, maybe? You've been writing letters to Adelaide? Well, you didn't tell her where you are, Kelly. No, Mama. Because Adelaide's mother can talk, let me tell you. I told her I was at Aunt Stella's helping with the kids. I did like you asked. Don't hold her too tight. Did you write to the boy, too? You're jiggling her too hard, Mama. She won't break. Did you write to him? He's the only one besides you I don't have to lie to. And did he write back? And what if his mother read those letters? Did you think of that? Why would she read letters addressed to him? Did you read my personal letters when I was at home? Of course not. Did you? You don't question me, Callie. Not until you're a mother yourself. Well, I am a mother now. That is my baby you got there. Give her back. Timbo could see her. He might want to marry me, Mom. I doubt that very much, Kelly. She's so beautiful. Well, men don't think babies are beautiful. Men either marry you or they don't. The baby is not their concern. Never has been, never will be. Well, you packed up? Yes, ma'am. My bag is in the hall. All right, well, say goodbye to the girl then. Kelly. Oh, no, Callie, please. We, 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 we said this was going to be the right thing. I don't want to, Mama. That don't matter, and you know it. Right is right. I want to take her with me. I told you I've done this once before. I won't do it again. I'm not asking you to do it. I want to do it. Callie, honey, you have no idea what it's like to be a woman on your own with a child. No idea. Well, I was a war widow, for God's sakes, and it was still hard. And look how you turned out without a father. What's she going to be with you not married? What's she going to be without me? I thought I'd name her Robin, Mama. It's sweet. Now you listen, and you listen good. This is not a Mama. joke, Caddy. Caddy, a girl as smart as you knows. With well, the shame of it, the shame of it alone. I'll move to some other town. I won't see Timbo. And do what? Do I what? Don't know what? I don't care. You. I just know she'll wonder about me, Mama. She'll wonder if I loved her. And there'll be no one to tell her that I do, and I do love her, Mama. She, I love her so much. She'll know, no, Kelly. No, she won't. No, she won't. And she will wonder her whole life why I left her. It's not her fault she was born. No. It's your fault. And now you're the one who's got to do the right thing here. That is what growing up means. And let me tell you, it ain't easy. It ain't easy being a grown-up, but that is what you are, right here and right now. Look at me. Callie, look at me. Grow up, Callie. Mama, look at her. You love her, you let her go. Now do it. <laughs> I do love you. Please remember. All right, let's go. Mama! I know, honey, I know, but walking out that door is the strongest thing we can do for her. How do you know? How do you know that when you are doing something that hurts this much, how do you know it's the right thing to do? Oh, baby, you just, you just do. Now, do you trust me? Hmm? Do you trust me? Yeah. All right. All right, now go on. Go on to the car. Now! <laughs> I'm sorry, I saw Callie leave. I thought y'all had gone. This is hard. 
And there's just no way to know, is there? Whether she's going to be raised by a Jewish couple in New York City or a bunch of drunks in Sioux Falls or what? There's other folks out there, too. Plenty of nice, regular people who would love a pretty little girl like this. Of course, a lot of them want a little boy, but, but there's nice women who want a little girl. I promise you that. <clears throat> Callie's father volunteered for Korea when she was just six years old. <laughs> and there was no arguing with that man. And when he didn't come home, I had to raise her on my own. You just wonder how she would have turned out if, if he would have just stayed home. She turned out fine, Mrs. Eden. I, I, I tried to tell him no. I said, you can't go off and fight some damn war. Take yourself right on out of my life. But he says, no, no. He knows what's right. He's got to do the right thing. And I had to let him do it. When it comes down to you and a man and a war, it's the war wins. Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I hope that's not so, ma'am. My brother just enlisted. He got sent to French Indochina. Oh, Vietnam? Mm. Well, I wish him the best. They're saying the conflict won't come to anything. I, um, <clears throat> I suppose there's no stopping him. No. <sighs> Didn't have any kids, I hope. Did you want him to go? You know, my Callie was the smartest girl in her school. She won a national prize for a poem she wrote. She was going to go to college, and now this. It's like she's up and gone to Vietnam herself. Oh, you want so much for your children, you know. You want the world for them. And then they go and they do something like this before they even had a chance to touch the world, before they even got close. She's a good girl, your Callie. She's one of the nicest girls we've had here. You did a fine job with her. Oh, indeed. <laughs> oh, and she'll get through this. I've seen it before. She will rise above it, and she will be fine. You'll see. You know, Callie was always running at things. Running into the ocean, running into the schoolyard, running into the streets <laughs> with a arms thrown as wide as they could be like she'd never get hurt, never fall down. Just like her daddy. Oh, damn it. Well, the neighbors are going to cut her dead. They're going to cut her dead in the street. She's going to have to hold her head up, but that is what she's going to do because I raised her. Now I got to let her go. I got to let my baby go. Would you, uh, would you go get Callie, please? She's out in the front in the car. She's going to have to make a list. I believe we're going to need a few things. Now, ma'am, you can take some more time if you need. No, please just go, go get her now. Do you mind telling me what you think I'm doing? Hmm? But it's true. There's no right thing in this world. No. You never get to know if you've done the right thing because you never get to see how it turns out. But I see you. I see you. And you are as right as right can be. You're as right as the flowers and the stars and the rain. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. And your mama wants you. And now we know. Now we know everything there is to know. I have a feeling they will all be fine. Well, 
that's all the time we have for this episode. Thanks for watching Playwrights Roundtable. Are you a budding playwright? Many of PRT's writers have gone on to present their works around the country. Check out their website for monthly meetings or join them on Facebook. Till next time, I'm Theodore E. Bear. <laughs> oh, it's all right, all of it here. Blow, you'll feel better. Come on. Uh, good dog, good boy.